Right, so find your place for yourselves where you have a little bit. Well, basically, in the beginning, we'll just be standing in the same spot. So, um, First, find your relaxation, really grounded through your feet, relaxed, shoulders down. Extend your abdomen, feel your abdomen. <clears throat> Draw up your breath. I'm going to use my hand so you know where I'm breathing, and we're going to be breathing down. You'll see my hands going down. You can do this if you want, but if you don't need to, you can do it now. So we'll do five. Inhalation. Slight hold, and then an exhalation. So at the end of every exhalation that we do in this whole sequence, when you get to the end, give an extra little pressure uh, to make sure you, you expel the last bit of air that might, you might be holding on to. All right. This time we'll be holding the breath a little bit longer and expelling it with a whistling sound. I'm going to do one more like this. We haven't done it before. And with, with the exhalation, you're going to push out the breath and make a sound, like a whoosh. But make it with your abdomen, from your abdomen, really press it out, all comes out in one go. So the, as you inhale, you're holding it a little bit longer than before. And 
Make a sound, if you can make a sound like a whoop, make the sound note come out of your belly. Okay. That's a, a deep cleansing breath. <clears throat> Relax, release your hands. Bring your hands to your shoulders and make a tight fist, make it really, really tight. If you're holding your breath at this point, you release it by releasing through your fingers, your left your little finger, and then out. Now this one, that one's called the nerve revitalizing exercise or breath. So um, you can apply that thinking to the hips, that, uh, that movement. <clears throat> and as you inhale, bring your hands behind your back, thumbs touching in the small of your back. Bring your hands forward. Gash your Create tension between your hands and exhale. Thank <sighs> you.
Let's count, I think it's four, maybe five. Okay, next. Raise. Draw your shoulder blades together, tighten them, like this, and open. As you do, come up on your toes. Oops. Release and relax. Next day. Feet further apart, palms out. Inhale as you're coming in, open, close, open, close. Tense your fists with your knees, tense your whole body, and release. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so all right, let's go into um, uh, the rowing exercise. We're going to be taking this movement into really everything that we do tonight, but particularly this sense of pushing and extending out of your hips, right? Pushing, drawing back. Push it. Left it forward. Use your breath in your own way. So while you're doing this, I want you to, to, to feel your your uh, your hips with your with your fists here. And as you come forward, don't move your hands first, right? Don't do that first, because this is what happens. This movement has to come out of the hips moving. So push and the arms come out, right? This is a very important lesson in this exercise here. So we're for the game.
Okay. So we can work on uh, the, um, eight directions. Sliding forward. You can pivot. Okay. Just now, this is just an exercise here. Push forward, up, pivot when you're ready, and come down. So one, slide. This curly here is very smooth. And there's no stopping from the curly. All one movement. And this movement comes out of the hips coming forward and coming back. Hips coming forward. Hips coming <clears throat> so pivoting is important. So uh, we'll just go through the eight directions. Um, just with our hands, make sure your hands come to the top of your head. Um, as you pivot, be ready to. So I'm going to do it with the bulk hand, but you can with you, you have room, but uh, Imagine you have the Vulcan in your hand. You're raising your Vulcan like this, but keep your hands open, keep your fingers open. Okay. So working on sliding and keeping your pelvis parallel with the mat so that your movement doesn't come up and down. So go to the left side, back to forward. Is Arnoldo in our group today? <laughs> I guess not. Okay. All righty. So I'm going to go on to the uh, eight count cut. All right. <laughs> um, I'll do it first with the bulk end. And you can do it just with your hands. So first with the back. Then. So, take them back, cut them down, make sure you're off the line here. Okay. 
So, uh, always the sense of pushing through and into the next movement. So, no finish. So, here, rust, the cross goes right into the next, the pivot. Number two, stepping forward. If I'm still in range here, if you can still see me. All right, so one more. Step forward. Last. Try and get a rhythm going in it. One, two, three, and pivot. So it's uh, it's fluid. It's not stopping and starting. Okay. Very deliberate. And always as you pivot, you come down, you're ready to take another step. You're always forward, always on that front leg. Mm. Number three, tank on. We've worked a lot on pivoting, pivoting, stepping back. Remember the pivot. Actually initiate from uh, your abdomen, from your uh, from your pelvis, your hips, your hips. So turn up. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's better. All right. Run up. Okay. Okay. As you turn, your hips are turning and making room for your floor to cut. And the coming with swinging different. This practice is not only teach you footwork and uh, how to get off the line in certain ways, but also helps you keep your consciousness and awareness as you're training because you always have your balance. Your, your tender of gravity is always, is always there. So you can see as you're going around, you can see everything that happens that's around you. Make sure 
four. Being attacked from behind, looking, seeing, stepping into it. It um, takes a long time to get to the understanding that as you're being attacked, you will want to move. If you don't move back, you need to move into it. And you need to see it happening and you need to be moving into it um, as, it's, as it's happening. You need to see it beforehand so that you're always, in a sense, pushing it back. So, where your weight is when you pivot is, is really very important so you can take that next step. So here um. Five. Being attacked from the side here. Strike. Firstly, you have to get protect yourself as you're chosen. Protecting your body, head, shoulder, hips. You come down if you need to, right? Getting off the line this way as you're stepping forward and also getting off the line here. Next. Still being attacked on this one side, side attack, We're getting out of the way here, off the line, just stepping out.
So, do you think of strike coming to take and step around? Okay, yeah. Eight. That all happened in one movement. The quick ones, the two are fairly close together. Here. All right, I'm going to come in now. Maybe we could talk about it. <laughs> um, or if you have any questions that you would like me to go over something. Um, it's, it's very strange for me to be doing this on my own without judging or relating my movement to what you're doing. <laughs> um, it's just started to rain. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions or anything you'd like me to go over, I'd be happy to do that. So, since I have a question, so I think it's um, number five um, when you're stepping 
with the attacker coming to the side with the yes. foot stepping back. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've always been kind of bringing my feet together or my hips together directly before I either step forward with the pre the one in before it or the one where I step back. And I'm wondering, and I noticed in the one you're stepping back, you're um, not as rigid. And I just want to see how in your, in your movement and I'm, and I'm thinking that I've been doing it wrong. So I'm wondering if you could maybe show it again or, or maybe. I'm, right. I'm, I'm happy to show it again. I do know that other people do do it like that. Um, okay. This is the way, you know, that I first learned it and I really haven't changed it, felt the need to change it. Um, it's not that I think you're doing it wrong, um, but I can show you again um, what it is that I do. And I'll do it with a book and it's, it's easier. Um, it's the second one. So, it, it, someone's attacking you from here, right? So I'm getting out of the way this way. I'm getting off the line this way. So as I step back, actually, my attacker is at an angle here. He's here, or she's here. So the side. This is protecting you because it's coming straight here. I'm getting off the line this way and turning. Um, I the two. Let's see. These two. I think the one is the attack is coming much closer. Uh, uh, no. Here, the attack is on you, and you turn, and you end up being much closer to your attack. The other one, you see it coming, and yeah, you just get off the line in a different, uh, in a different way. It's just another option. Now, what is it that some people do? I think they get off the line, and then they do. That maybe I know they bring their feet together. Mm. Yeah, that make that makes sense. Where you've got more, you've got more room on the one where you're stepping back. Right. You're not, you're not turning a ninety degree angle as as acute as you are when you're stepping forward, where you almost have to bring your feet together to round that corner as you step forward. So when you're stepping back, you have more liberty, I think, and that makes sense. Right. Yes, it just creates a different my. Yeah. Yeah, so Sensei, just to um, expand on what Garrett was saying, I don't remember where, um, I remember it being shown and that they were both very similar, um, stepping forward and stepping back, but the stepping back is you do um, block from the side and then bring the feet together as you pivot, then the other foot steps back. Um, it, not right or wrong. I'm just saying I know where Garrett's getting that from. I'm not sure I, um, who I've seen teaching that, but that's the way I always understood it too. What, to bring your feet together? Yeah, for both of them. But the, when you're doing it, it looks a bit more natural <laughs> than for, for the rear-facing one, as you say, maybe... Well, I don't think I've ever taught it the other way, Tim, so <laughs> I don't know where you think... Oh, no, I way. wasn't saying that you have. Yeah. I, I'm saying I'm not sure where right. that came from, but I do... I, I don't know. It, you know, it could have been that Chiba Sensei himself changed it later on. Um, uh, you know, there isn't any rigid way about attacking. You learn to get off the line, you respond to the attack as it's happening. You know, you can't have your feet in cement. Um, so, you know, just think of these as sort of options, learning to um, uh, allow you to always have the my that you need that's safe for you. Whether you're stepping back or stepping in, 
uh, stepping off the line, whichever way. And, and that's these, ex these exercises, the eight count kata are really um, very um, important to help you embed those movements into your body. So um, remember Archie Champion said, Sensei said, um, you know, in the early days, you should do them every single day. You just go through them, you just go through them until your body just starts to move. But when you're doing something on your own, you need to use your imagination to realize what the attack is that you are responding to. Otherwise, your movement is just totally empty and mechanical. So. <clears throat> Sensei? Yes. Um, just to comment on that, I, I've taught it both ways and I, I do agree. I do recall both versions being taught in our organization. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I, I think so too. But I, I think, um, I think they're just both. I agree with you that it's a study in my eye and footwork, and you can, you can bring so many different focus to your practice in these movements. Mm. So the, I think the value in bringing your feet together and then dropping back helps students find a certain precision to move around a point and to find that symmetry with five and six, that five, you bring your feet together and you turn that corner clearly and sharply to come to the other side. And then there's a certain symmetry in doing number six, where you bring your feet together and you pull your hip back to drop back and, and get off the line in that way, it kind of requires right. something of the hip. And that's a certain way to study. But then I, I agree with you that if you think of the attacker coming in, and sometimes I do partner exercises like this, then I say, well, for number five, come around the corner and take his head. And then mm. on number six, give some space and take the wrist instead. Right. So a, a, uh, a different study. Yeah. I mean, it's just expanding your awareness of, of you know, of, of your movements and and uh, and what you can do, I think the you know this is something that I've had drummed into me for <laughs> from my dancing, but also I relate it totally to to Aikido, and that is that when you take a step, you've got to go through center, whether or not you stop in the center and you pivot and you maybe step forward or back, but you never step forward with the back foot with a, and have a gap between the foot that you're passing, if you know what I mean. There is a sense of moving through center, otherwise you're off, your center of gravity is off. Um, that's why it's really uh, very, um, critical to move your hips, to move your feet, your footwork. So if you start thinking about just moving your foot from A to B, you're going to miss what it is that holds that footwork together, which is, you know, in, in your upper body, in your uh, pelvis, um, in, in your hips. So, um, that's why this is a, a really good practice because you have to, you're pivoting all of the time, right? And keeping your balance and your awareness. So if you are taking a, if you if you you've lost your, um, your, your center of gravity, you're going to be bending. You're going to be, you know, you, and you lose your awareness as you're going around. Um, so ah, it's the same thing as you raise your hands to the top of your head. You need to find that center point so that your whole body can turn underneath it. But if, if your hands are a little bit off, you're, you're off here and in your turn, the whole turn is gonna be off all the way down to your feet. But doing this over and over again with a sword in your hand as well, or even with, with your hands, um, you slowly will make your movement more efficient all the way down from the top to the bottom. And it's a way to integrate your movement. You hear later on, um, 
Well, I used to hear a lot, oh, this person's, uh, their upper and lower body are not integrated, are not synchronized. And so that's what you're doing. So there has to be a center to the top and the bottom, right? So if you move from that center, top and bottom, then um, the rest kind of flares out from there and does the right thing. But um, if you just start with your feet and just take a step and, it, and, and, and everything else catches up with that step, you've lost it. You, you know, you're off balance, so. Um, Complicated. <laughs> Basically, you've just got to do it a million times. Yeah. 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 I I think Sensei, other way to say what you were explaining is that when you move your whole body, complete body and mind together, you need to move same time, same direction. So yeah. it's the same thing. So if, if it's like unsync, so there's, there's actually no strength, no power behind it. So you are out of balance and you're weak. So, so that, uh, that's, uh, that's the other way I kind of heard the same thing explain different words. So it's uh, everything moves together. Everything moves together. And you know, we're working on all the parts for a long, long time. And you know, you put your mind somewhere to try and get one part right. And of course, you know, the rest kind of gets left behind. Then you work on another part. And eventually, uh, we have our centered, connected, of all lively openness, right? No. Uh, it all comes together. But you can't really separate any of those parts. You can, but really, if you have one really well, you'll have them all. 